cavalry horse for the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty Hyo Silver, the Lone Ranger. Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. The stories of his strength and courage, his daring and resourcefulness have come down to us through the generations, and nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! Faster, boy, faster! Hail Silver! Boy! In the center of a corral on Mustang Mag's Texas ranch, a handsome, fiery, silvery white colt plunged and pitched his nostrils flaring and his hoofs flashing as they caught the rays of the sun. But try as he would, the son of silver could not dislodge the masked man who sat so expertly in his saddle. For days, the Lone Ranger had been gentling the wild-spirited colt so that Dan Reed, his 14-year-old nephew, could learn to master the horse and claim him for his own. First, the hackamore was slipped over the colt's head. And when he had become accustomed to that, he was introduced to the saddle. Now, he was having his first experience with man, a strange creature who sat astride his back and defied every attempt of the colt to toss him. Suddenly, the horse shook his head and settled quietly on his sturdy feet, and the Lone Ranger guided him to the rail where Tonto and Dan were looking on. Steady, boy. Take the reins, Dan. From now on, you must master him yourself. Golly, if I could only learn to ride like you. Uh, that take plenty practice. Yeah, I know. And I mean to practice plenty, too. Do you think you can handle the colt now? I'm going to try. I keep a firm hand, Dan, but don't abuse it. Only a cruel and stupid rider makes his mount submit by yanking on the reins. Yes, sir. He's a spirited horse, Dan. Not right. He's already shown some of the same qualities as silver. Well, it's up to you to develop those qualities. Gosh, I, I couldn't want for anything more than to have him be as fine a horse as silver. Maybe when I... What is it? I just happened to think. I haven't given him a name. The colt already has a name, Dan. Oh, are you sure? Yes. He was named when he was just a little fellow. We named the youngster when we brought him here to Mustang Mag's ranch. Oh, I hoped I could think of a real good name for him. Hold on. Maybe you can. There's no reason why we can't give him a new name. Oh, really? I tell you what, Dan. The day you ride the colt successfully, you can select a name for him. Ah. Oh, golly. i got to ride him now. Steady, boy. <laughs> Steady now. Steady. There. Now, boy. Bring him in, Dan. Ah, bring head down. Well, I'm trying to. Uh, oh, oh, boy. Look out. Oh. Hoofs flashing, oh. the high-spirited cold twisted and rolled as Dan tried frantically to cling oh. to his precarious perch. Then the youth found himself flung from the saddle and sprawled uncomfortably in the sand. Oh, you heard, Dan? Oh, you hit dirt plenty hard. 
I'm all right. Just had the breath knocked out of me. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I must have looked awfully silly sailing over his head like that. <laughs> Colt Victor that time. <laughs> well, I, I'll stay in the saddle this dry. No, I'm afraid that fall might make him lose his nerve, Tonto. He's going to try again. Uh, and that good sign. Dan, make up mine to ride Colt now. Yeah, steady, boy. And this time we're sticking together. <laughs> Get up there, boy. That's it. That's the boy. I guess he's beginning to like me. He isn't bugger. Oh, oh, boy. Stay with him. I, oh, pull up there. Hey. Oh. <laughs> Cold throw Dan again. Him still, Victor. <laughs> oh, I thought I was on him for sure that time. Don't take it so hard, Dan. <laughs> it isn't easy to master a spirited colt like that. Stay with him and keep trying. The only way you'll learn. <laughs> Come on, Dotto. <laughs> well, next time you'll see me, I'll stay in the saddle. Here, boy. Come here. <laughs> In the nearby town of Trigger Bend, it promised to be another sunny, serene afternoon. Then, suddenly, town folk were electrified by the sound of shots and the sight of a masked man running from the express office with flaming guns. Through that deputy, boys, he recognized us. Drop those guns. Riddle them. If he lives, he'll identify us. Riddle them, boys. You men, cut them off. They're outlaws. They're out the express office. Shoot them. They're getting away. Drill them down. A single shot echoed ominously in the street and the deputy staggered, then crumpled to the ground. For a moment, the crowd stared, then hurried toward the fallen figure as the outlaws whipped their horses out of town. The first to reach him was Steve Lasker, owner of the Ten Strike Cafe. Help me turn him over. It looks like there ain't a blame thing we can do for him, folks. He's dead. Look out! Let me through! Stand aside the law! Hey, it's the sheriff, old Missouri. Stand back and let him through. Make way for the sheriff. Hey, About out. time you showed up, sheriff. Here's to me your deputy was representing the only law we had in Trigger Bay. Them's libelous words, Steve Lasker. But I'm in no mood to argue them now. Lem. Lem, where you hit, pard? You're wasting your breath, Missouri. He's dead. Shot by them bandits who robbed the express office. I can't... Thunderation. What's the matter? Lem couldn't have been killed by the outlaws. He was shooting it out with them face to face. He's been shot in the back. By thunder, there's nothing lower than shooting a man in the back, not even horse stealing. When I get my hands on the dirty, ornery, underhanded, yellow-livered coyote that gunned that shot, I... You're a loud talking, empty-headed fool, Sheriff. You've got more smoke than you have fire. It's about time we called your bluff. Dead rats, your hide, Steve Lasker. That's the fifth robbery them outlaws have got clean away with. You don't even know who they are. Ain't I doing everything a man can to find out? Them armories ain't ordinary outlaws. We ain't interested in alibis, are we, boys? We're interested in results. You'll get results. Just give me a chance. We're making sure we get results, Sheriff. Hmm? We're setting up a vigilantes committee. Ain't that right, boys? Yes, yes. good ticket. Sure, vigilantes. If you can't capture them crooks, we will. I move we make Steve Lasker leader of the vigilantes. We'll meet tonight and make it official. From now on, boys, we'll take care of them crooks ourselves. Some time later, Steve Lasker sat with a hard-faced gunman named Duke and a youth, Kip Mortimer, in the back room of the Ten Strike Cafe. Well, I, I can't go on with it, Steve. I'm pulling out. You young coyote. Take it easy, Duke. I didn't bargain for murder. You don't want to pull out, Kip. You made me an outlaw. Crook like yourselves. You've been mighty useful, Kip. Your pa being bank president made it possible for us to know where and when the boys could make the richest hauls. You've learned all the information from me you're going to. I'm through. Ain't you forgetting something? Well, if you mean that $5,000 gambling debt I ran up in your crooked poker games, you can tell my father. I couldn't be punished worse than I am. Oh, that gambling debt came in handy. But there's a bigger reason why you can't quit. The information you gave us makes you guilty along with the rest of us. Why did you have to kill the deputy? He spotted the boys robbing the express office. That ain't all. He recognized us. Steve hadn't drilled them. There'd be a posse on our heels now. The town won't take this murder lying down. They'll look for somebody to string with a hangnoose. Well, they'll get somebody. But it won't be us. What do you mean? The town's holding a meeting tonight to vote me leader of a vigilantes committee. They're, they're electing you to track the killer? <laughs> yeah. And I'm making sure them tracks don't lead to me. But, but the sheriff, Missouri... Missouri's a tongue-wagging fool. As head of the vigilantes, I'll have the law in the palm of my hand. Uh, 
Missouri's got friends, Steve. Yes, the Lone Ranger and the engine. I know those hombres. If they chip in with the sheriff, they'll get us for sure. Hey, I saw Missouri hightailing it for Mustang mags not long ago. I'll give you odds he's taking his troubles to the mask men. Oh, I forgot about them, too. Lone Ranger and your pa are kind of friendly, ain't they, Kip? Well, I, I guess they are. Sure. Lone Ranger was mostly responsible for him being appointed president of the bank after Jarvis Matthews was jailed. What are you getting at? I reckon if your pa was in danger and asked the Lone Ranger's help, he'd get it. Yes? And if it meant going to your pa's ranch, the masked critter'd go. What? That's lonesome country where you live, Kip. Dangerous, too. Only way to get there is by skirting a cliff overlooking the stream. If you mean to murder hey, him, I'll... Steve, you sound like you've got an ace up your sleeve. I have. And if it's played right, it'll trump the Lone Ranger for keeps. Meanwhile, at Mustang Mags, Dan Reed sought to get better acquainted with his new horse by sponging and brushing the silvery white coat. Easy. Stand still, boy. This won't hurt a bit. Stop kicking up your heels. You know you like this. Quiet. Quiet, boy. Hey, wait! Oh, you wild galoot. You kicked over that bucket of water all over me. I'll have to fill that bucket all over again. Ouch! Now that's the last straw. Flicking your tail right in my face. Oh, boy. Oh, oh boy. Oh, steady, boy. Morning, son. I'm looking for the Lone Ranger. Hey, morning. He's in the house with Mustang Mag. Oh, thanks. I'm anxious to see him. Hi. I'm looking for the Lone Ranger. Well, you come to the right place, son. Come on in. Why, it's Kip Mortimer. I haven't seen you in a dog's age. How's your paw? Uh, well, that's why I'm here. He, he's in trouble. What kind of trouble, Kip? I, I don't know. He wouldn't tell me. But he needs you right away. I see. He said he was threatened by the outlaws who have been staging all the holdups. By Ginger, I'm going with you. Maybe Mortimer can give me a clue to who them thieving polecats are. Well, I'm going too. No, Dan. Not and I'll go alone. Uh, where is your father, Kip? Uh, he's home. I'll take you to him. Oh, he's usually at the bank at this time. Oh, he, he went home early. All right, come on. How much farther is it, Kip? Just around that bend. We ride long time. We'll soon be there. Oh. What's the matter? My horse is lame. I'll have to pull up. Oh, Silver, hold on. Oh, 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 oh. Don't stop. Oh, that needs you. You can't mistake the house. It's the only one in sight. Very well. We'll see you there. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. Kip's behaving strangely, Tonto. Ah, him plenty nervous. What's that ahead? Well, me not see. Oh, this country plenty lonesome. Me not like it. All right. We'll soon be... How's those? Ah. And hide behind boulders. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. With an outlaw pack close at their heels, the Lone Ranger and Tonto urge their mounts to greater speeds up the mountain slope. The flashing hooves of Silver and the flying feet of Scout lengthened the gap between them and the pursuers. Then, as they neared the bend in the trail, they saw a second outlaw band routed and ride toward them. An ambush, Tonto. Ha! Ah. Gang defy trappers between them. Our only escape is straight ahead. Ha! Ah. Wait! Wait! There's steep cliff! You're right! We're trapped! falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to continue our story. As the outlaws closed in from two sides, the Lone Ranger and Tonto reined in Silver and Scout at the brink of the cliff. They saw that the rocky ledge dropped sheer and sharp to the blue water of a stream. Our only chance, Tonto. Uh -huh. Come on, Silver! Uh -huh. At the masked man's and the Indian's command, the powerful Silver and sturdy Scout raced toward the edge of the cliff. 
and gathered their strength into mighty leaps, which carried them beyond the craggy brink and plunged them and their masters toward the stream below. A shout of mingled rage and astonishment rose from the outlaws as they reined in their horses at the mountain's ledge. Then they fired scattered, wasted shots at the tiny figures who were swimming strongly to shore. It was dusk when Kip Mortimer, riding slowly toward his father's ranch, heard the staccato beat of hoofs behind him and turned to see a masked man astride a white stallion and an Indian who sat a paint rapidly overtaking him. They're coming to get me. They'll kill me. Get up, horse. Get up there. I want you, Kip. No, no. Get up, horse. Wait up for all of you. Stay where you are. Come oh, on, Sylvie. I warn you. Let go. Let me go. Get that rope over me. Wait on this horse, fellow. Ah, he got him. Four oh, horse. Oh, oh there. Oh, oh Silver. Oh. Oh, uh, now we'll talk. I'll take the rope off me. So tight I can't get my breath. Tighter ropes than this are the penalty for murder, Kip. Why, you uh, are... Need lotion rope. Why did you lead us into ambush? Uh, Answer me. Oh, they made me do it. Who? Steve Laskin, Duke. They threatened to frame me for the murder of the deputy if I didn't. Who did murder the deputy, Kip? Steve. He shot him from behind because the gang was surprised while robbing the express office. I see. Oh, I... I know I've been all kinds of a fool, but I didn't want to be one of the gang. you got to believe me. I wish I could, for your father's sake. Oh, it's true. I ran up a large gambling debt in Steve Lasker's cafe. Dad's always been dead set against gambling, and I'd promised I'd never bet. I couldn't pay the debt, and Steve threatened to go to Dad and expose me. Mm. And then he, he said if I brought him certain information, he'd cancel the debt. What kind of information? Tips as to when certain companies had a lot of cash on hand. He knew I could find out through Dad... He made me a part of his crooked scheme, so I'd have to go along with the gang or go to jail. Uh, outlaw plenty smart. It was smart, all right. And I was dumb, too dumb to see until too late that Steve was pushing to me in a bigger mess than I already was. I tried every way I knew to break with him, but I couldn't. Did you make any raids with the gang? No. Information was all they wanted from me. Kip, I'm going to give you a chance to redeem yourself. You mean... With your help, we can capture the gang. Oh, I'll do anything you say. All right, come on. Where are we going? We're going to talk to your father, Kip. I want him to hear my plan, too. Come on, Silver. Get him up. Come. Get up, boy. Get up. The next day, Kip Mortimer went into the back room of the Ten Strike Cafe. Steve Lasker and Duke were waiting. I've been waiting for you, Kip. Where you been? I, uh, I've been with my father at the bank. Got any new tips? Yeah, we could use some fresh information. The boys are getting restless. <laughs> they carried away so much cash from the express job yesterday, they're hankering for action again pronto. I, I got a message for you, Steve. Message? Who from? My father. I don't savvy. Uh, neither do I. You haven't been up to any tricks, have you, Kip? Oh, of course not, my... My dad just asked me to deliver a message to Steve. Let's have it. Well, he, he heard about your being elected chief of the vigilantes last night, and... Well, go on. What's the rest? Well, he, he doesn't have confidence in the sheriff after the express robbery yesterday. <laughs> well, he ain't the only one. Poor Missouri's out on a limb. Before I'm through, I'll cut it out from under him. My father's anxious for you and your vigilantes to stand guard over a shipment of gold at the bank tonight, Steve. What? You ain't of a mind to play a practical joke on us, are you, Kip? Oh, no. How much uh, is the gold worth? $30,000. It was just shipped in from the mines today. And your pa wants us to watch over it? Oh, yes. He he plans to express it to the bank in Powder City tomorrow, where it'll be safer. But well, with all the robberies that have been in Trigger Bend, he's afraid the outlaws will find out about the bullion tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and he's afraid to trust the sheriff to guard it, huh? <laughs> Well, if that ain't rich. <laughs> <laughs> he spills the secret to the outlaws instead. And gets his son to deliver the message. <laughs> hey, wait a minute. Huh? If that gold's stolen, your pa will be out $30,000, won't he, Kip? I reckon he will. Do you expect us to believe that you'd let that happen instead of exposing us to your pa and the sheriff? Yeah, what about that? Well, I can't expose you without exposing myself. Sure. Kip's a smart lad. He thinks more of his freedom than his pa's 30000 Nothing wrong about that, is it, Duke? Well, we won't know till tonight. Could be a trick. Well, just in case, we'll give Kip a chance to change his story. Because we're taking him with us to the bank tonight. 
And at the first wrong move, we'll drill him. That's the ticket. Oh, my father, he'll recognize we'll me. We'll give you a mask to wear. Go back to your pa and tell him the vigilantes will take over guard duty after dark tonight. I'll tell him. Don't forget to come back. Putting you in front tonight where we can keep an eye on you. Oh, uh, Kip. Did your dad tell anyone else he was sending for the vigilantes to watch over the gold? No. Good. Now get out of here. Duke, you heard what the kid said? About him and his pa being the only ones who know the vigilantes are standing guard? Yeah. It'd be a mite embarrassing for me to explain to the banker how the bullion was stolen with the vigilantes watching. Ah, uh, savvy. I want the banker put away, huh? And Kip, too. He'll be no good to us after that. I'll drill them both. <laughs> There was a bustle of activity at the Lazy J Ranch, seated importantly at a table in the parlor while Mustang Mag watched with evident disgust. Missouri swore in his deputies the ranchers and townsmen who filed before him. Finally, the last one left, and Mustang Mag surveyed the sheriff with her hands on her hips. I've got important business to tend to. I've got to post them deputies to make sure Steve Lasker and his gang don't get away. Steve Lasker, huh? So he's your secret. Oh, dead rat you for a meddling female. You tricked me into saying that. Oh, save your wind, Missouri. You'll need it to swear me in as deputy. What? Swear you in as de- Have you gone loco? No, I ain't. I never did like that no-account saloon keeper, and I'd just as leave settle scores with him as all them hombres you had out there. Doggone it, Mag. You're a woman. Women ain't... Oh, shut to... your mouth, you old coot. Oh. I can handle a six-gun same as any man. Oh, except the Lone Ranger. And just in case you need persuading, I'm getting that same right now. What? What? Do I get to be a deputy or don't I? Mag, put down that gun. It might go off. Talk fast, Missouri. All right. All right, you win. Dad rats you for the most cantankerous female I ever met. That night, several hard-faced men wearing six guns hung low in the habit of outlaws took up positions near the bank in the darkening shadows. Then a small group led by Steve Lasker and Duke went up to the door, thrusting Kip Mortimer, now masked, before them. You're the vigilantes? Yeah, we came to take care of the gold. Let me go. I don't understand. You'll learn as we go along. Lead the way to the gold. Steve Lasker. You're not vigilant, it's your outlaws. He learns fast. Take them back, boys. Yeah, that gold me. All right, Mortimer, show us the yellow dust and make it fast. No, that gold isn't mine. Quit stalling, we ain't playing games. <laughs> it's in there. Give us the key. I... If I can remember where I put it. Well, it'll be plenty unhealthy for you if you forget. I have it. Now, if you'll just let me... Watch him, Duke. Might try reaching for a gun. I wish he would. I ain't fired this shooting iron since it was clean. Fan out, boys. Keep your eyes peeled. All right, what's the matter with you? Keys. There's so many of them, I have a hard time remembering which is which. Well, try concentrating real hard, Mortimer. Because if you don't, them keys won't mean a thing to you. I have it now. Which is the gold? Uh, box in back. $30,000. Hey, give a hand with that bullion, boys. The box is heavy enough to contain a whole gold mine. Let me break open the lid. There. Uh, let's have a look at this stuff. Yeah, I want to... Duke. Huh? This ain't gold. It's rocks wrapped in paper. Rocks? We've been tricked, Steve. Where's Kip? Oh, that dirty double crosser. There he is. Let him have it. Got those guns. What the? Behind us. Come on, Toto. Uh, it's a Lone Ranger riddle. Get that mask, man. No, oh, my heart. Winged me. Don't try that again. Get him, boy. It's a trap, Duke. They're right in this mouth side, too. Cross that mask, hombre, boy. You ask what? You get plenty. Oh, Steve, where the. Why, the low down skunk, he's gone. Skip. Take care of Duke, Toto. Me take him. Unaware that the Lone Ranger was in pursuit, Steve Lasker raced through the bank to the street and made his way to the back room of the Ten Strike Cafe. He quickly lit the lamp and went to the safe where he kept his stolen loot. Blast him. They won't take me. I'll get clean out of the state and take these valuables with me. Leave them trinkets and cash where they are, you mangy coyote. What the? You are red crook. I just wish you'd make a wrong move so I could give you a taste of hot lead from this shooting iron. Uh, shooting off your mouth about Missouri being sheriff. And up to your neck in crookedness all the time he was preaching law and order. 
Why, you double dealing poor cat. I have a mind to have a go at you with my bare hands. That won't be necessary, oh, Mag. Mag, what are you doing here? Dad ratted, I thought I told you to stay and keep an eye on the jail. Well, you darn fool, who wants to run away with the jail? Uh, I'm taking you in for murder, Steve, you back shooting skunk. We're taking him in, Missouri. He's my prisoner, too. <laughs> Near the corral of the Lazy J Ranch, a masked man and an Indian sat astride their horses and watched a fiery, silvery-white colt plunge and pitch with young Dan Reed on his back. For two days, the lad had devoted all his attention to his new horse, determined to show the Lone Ranger and Tonto that he could not only stay in the colt's saddle, but control him as well. Now, once again, he was gamely attempting to master the son of silver and prove that he was ready to ride. Stay with him, Dan. Uh, you ride fine. I think I'm beginning to get the hang of it. Bring his head down. Ah, rein in. Yeah. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> God. Toss me again. Uh. Holt win again. Him still victor. I'll ride him yet. <laughs> I'm sure you will, Dan. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scout. I'll Silver. Away. <laughs> just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. <laughs>